Lawrence, for a long time, people wondered, is the universe expanding or is it steady state? Then people asked, okay, it's expanding, but it's kind of a, at a decelling rate because of gravity. And then suddenly, a little less than 10 years ago, it's like a revelation that the universe is not only expanding, but the accelerate, it's accelerating and it's expanding. Help us understand that. Well, I, I w in some sense, I wish I could because it's the biggest, probably the biggest mystery in science right now is, is why. Uh, it was indeed, as you pointed out, a great revelation because the big thing that everyone knows about gravity is that gravity sucks. It always pulls. It never pushes. <laughs> and in order for the universe to accelerate, there has to be some force pushing it outward. Against gravity. And, well, yes. In principle, against gravity. But what we discovered is that, in fact, it can be a part of gravity itself. Because the amazing thing about general relativity is if you put... There's one kind of energy. What, what general relativity tells us is that not just matter gravitates, but energy gravitates. Any kind of energy you have produces a gravitational effect. But all normal kinds of energy pr produce attractive gravity. Mm. There's one kind of energy that produces uh, repulsive gravity, and that's the energy of nothing. <laughs> now, by that I don't mean the energy of nothing. I mean the energy of nothing. <laughs> okay? If you put energy in empty space, then general relativity will tell you that, empty, that energy will be gravitationally repulsive. So the question is, what's the energy of empty space? The simple answer, I mean, if you ask George Bush, now let's say you asked a four-year-old, what's the energy of empty space? The four-year-old would say nothing, okay, because there's nothing there. And that's a good answer, but the four-year-old hasn't taken general relativity and quantum mechanics because it turns out empty space isn't so empty. Once we combine quantum mechanics and relativity, empty space is a boiling, bubbling brew of virtual particles that pop into existence and out of existence in a time so short that you, can't that see them. you can't see them. Now, that sounds like theology in a sense, yeah. but it's not because you can't see them directly, but you can see their effects indirectly. When you, when, it turns out that, that, that the fact that they're around changed the properties of atoms in a way that we can actually calculate. And it's probably the most successful calculation in all of science. When you incorporate the effect of these virtual particles, you can predict the energy level spacings in hydrogen. The great success of quantum, quantum mechanics, Bohr's success, doesn't give the right answer unless you include these things, and, and Feynman and others were among the first people to be able to calculate this, you get an agreement between theory and experiment to one part in a billion. There's no other place I know of in science, nowhere, where from first principles you can predict something with that level of accuracy. So we know the virtual particles are there. The question is, okay, if they're there, how much energy do they contribute to empty space? And when we do the calculation... We come up with the worst prediction in all of <laughs> physics. We predict that there's at least 120 orders of magnitude more energy in empty space than there is in everything we see. One with 120 zeros. Exactly. There's no and name for that number. There's, yeah, there's no name for that number, and that's except embarrassment probably is the best name. <laughs> right. But uh, we, as a result, we know that's wrong because we wouldn't be here, it turns out. So all of us theorists for many years assumed we knew the answer it had to be zero, right? Because you can't cancel a number that's that big with another number that's that big and leave something really small left over. That just seems unnatural. So the answer seemed to be zero. But the interesting thing is, cosmology, which is one way to, since this energy, if it's there, is going to affect the, the universe, you can look in, at the universe and see if it's there. That's like your experiment. Yeah, exactly. Cosmology is actually an experimental science, ultimately. Yeah. And so theorists may have their predilections, but we should go out and measure it. And the big surprise, and it wasn't a completely big surprise I'm, I'm, to some of us, I, I must say, in, in 1995, uh, I and a colleague had, had argued that there had to be this energy in empty space. I did it to make because it was the only way the data could agree with everything. I also did it because it was so crazy it would be fun to... I didn't really believe it necessarily, but I said that's the only way it could work. And then when they discovered... Then in 1998, by looking at the at distant supernovae, exploding stars, and seeing... And they're wonderful what's called standard candles. They allow us to measure... Same dis brightness uh, intrinsically so that you can determine the distance by the apparent brightness. You got it. Perfect. I couldn't have said it better myself. It's exactly right. And because of that, we can tell how far away they are, and then we can measure how fast they're moving by looking at something called their redshift, the, the, how light gets stretched out as they move. And, and if we see how fast they're moving as a function of their distance, we can measure the expansion rate of the universe. And was discovered, to most people's surprise... That, in, that the universe is accelerating. And the question then became is, well, how much energy is there? It turned out, by the way, the amount of energy that is in empty space was just what was needed, which is the reason in 1995 we'd predicted it. Uh. Because we know the universe is flat. 
which is an amazing discovery. After 80 years, we've discovered the universe <laughs> is flat, and I, we could talk about that. In, one of the reasons I got into, in fact, probably the reason I got into cosmology from particle physics is because in order to have a flat universe, you have to have enough energy to make it flat. We thought most of the energy was in something called dark matter. I figured if I was the first person to detect dark matter, I'd know how the universe would end because a flat universe expands differently than an open and closed universe. We now know the universe is flat, but we also now know there's only 30% of the amount of energy and matter to make it flat. Including the dark matter. Including the dark matter. And that was a big paradox, except it turns out there's 70, just what you needed, 70% of the energy of the universe resides in empty space. And we have no idea why it's there. We don't have the slightest idea. No one has any idea. And if, if anyone tells you they do, especially if they're a string theorist, they're lying. <laughs> and, uh, and so it is really, right now, we live in this cockamamie universe, which is full of dark matter and dark energy, and we don't understand the nature of either yet. And in fact, I like to think of it as the ultimate Copernican revolution, in a sense, because not only are we not living anywhere special, we're not made of anything special. You get rid of you and me and the cameras and the room and the stars and galaxies and everything you can see, and the universe is largely the same. We're just a 1% of pollution in a universe filled with dark matter and dark energy. So we have 70% of all reality being this dark energy, almost the rest of the 30% being dark matter. What does that mean about the ex accelerating expansion of the universe? Well, what it means, is, if you think of the history of the universe, is that actually things have changed. Early on in the history of the universe, when the universe was mostly matter, hmm. because the attraction, matter produces attractive gravity, the universe was actually, the expansion was slowing down. It was slowing down with time. Until about 5 billion years ago, when it turns out the density of matter, which was dropping, fell below the energy density of empty space, and that repulsive energy started taking over, and then the universe started accelerating, and it's, far, and it's been accelerating ever since. Well, the density is even getting less over time as the, you expand of, well, of matter. Well, the density of matter is right. getting less, but the density of empty space is space. raining constant. You know why? Because there's nothing there, so it can't get, it, it can't get diluted. Yeah. And so it remains constant, and that means there's a constant acceleration uh, in the future. And that means, by the way, that, that not only have we changed our picture of what the universe is made of now, but it's changed our picture of not just the present universe, but the future of the universe. And the future is, is pretty bad.